parte de lo que hemos estado esperando. Eh, igual han pasado varias cosas dentro de la semana, ya que si bien no sé cuánto han estado, cuánto realmente son como amantes de la música techno, ¿cuánto les gusta el techno así como conocen varios? Y se han dado cuenta que la último, creo que el último mes ha sido súper fundamental para la música acá en Chile, ya que han venido varios estandartes de, dentro del estilo. O sea, hace dos semanas atrás, o tres, a principio de mes, se hizo lo que es Club Round, con gente como Dimitri, que es el creador, el fundador de Tresor, del Club de Berlín. Eh, luego vino Fauna, que vino con la que estuvo a los chicos de Underground Resistance, que estuvo Mike, eh, eh, Mark Flash y Mike Banks, y ellos también estuvieron acá en la escuela. Y hoy es como para, casi como para cerrar el ciclo, que viene Juan Atkins, que es considerado, bueno, los que no lo conocen, es como la piedra fundamental dentro de este estilo de música, y tenemos la suerte de tenerlo acá. Eh, el formato de conferencia de nosotros es, es muy específico, no, 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 quizás ver a un DJ tocando, lo van a ver siempre. La idea de nosotros de hacer este tipo de, de, de conferencia es un poco más personal, ya donde no tengan problema en preguntar cosas. O sea, tienen a alguien que, la verdad, eh, esta es la tercera vez que viene a Chile, eh, pero es muy poca las oportunidades que van a poder de tener de poder preguntar cosas así casi cara a cara. ¿ya? Entonces, vayan pensando las cosas. Eh, nosotros igual tenemos como un schedule de, de preguntas que a lo mejor le van a resolver a ustedes muchas. Eh, pero tengan eso, tengan la libertad de preguntar. Yo, yo lo, 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 les recomiendo eso porque la verdad que eh, Juan vive en Detroit, viaja todo el rato, está todo el rato viajando. Venir a Chile hoy, estar acá es súper eh, difícil porque si bien es un, es un espacio que los artistas lo toman para descansar, porque como ayer estaba tocando en el Amanda, o sea, para, hoy día tocan en el Amanda y ayer estaba tocando en otro, en otro club, en el Cerro, Casi siempre este, este espacio lo toman los artistas para descansar, más que para estar compartiendo. Entonces traten de... de... Estas instancias no se dan. La verdad que a nivel mundial nunca se dan. Eh, traten de aprovechar lo que más puedan. Nosotros por lo mismo tratamos de aprovechar lo que más podemos. ¿ya? Eh, entonces, como les decía, vamos a hacer un, un formato de, de, de preguntas que son básicamente direccionadas al estilo de Juan. ¿Ya? Eh, Felipe, que es alumno de nosotros, nos va a ayudar con la traducción y él va a estar haciendo la traducción. No sé si todos hablan inglés, pero básicamente es para que vayan eh, viendo el, el formato de cómo, cómo se hace en esto, esto Music Conference. ¿Ok? Eh, Juan, ¿todo ok? Sí, perfecto. Estamos haciendo un streaming también para la gente que, que, está, que no pudo estar con nosotros, que está compartiendo. Eh, y Felipe, vamos a compartir entonces. Hola a todos, soy Felipe Nadó, mucho gusto. Eh, vamos a hacer la conferencia aquí con Juan. Eh, first of all, Juan, we are, we are ready now to begin. Eh, queremos eh, darte la bienvenida. We want to... Eh, está ahí preparando su propio streaming. Your own streaming. So, we, we try. There you go. Ahí está. I think we have the cameraman there. So, uh, we want to give you a warm welcome. Un aplauso para Juan Aki. Thank you again for being here. It's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to have you here with us, and uh, we're going to talk about music. You know, this is what we love. So, um, let's go straight to the point. I'm sure that mucha gente le ha hecho esta pregunta. A lot of people has made you this question. So, I'm going to make this first in Spanish and then in English. Okay? Primero va la pregunta en español y después en inglés. Entonces, ¿en qué aspecto ha influenciado el techno la música moderna? ¿Qué límites ha quebrado con su irrupción? This will be a Spanish class for you as well, okay? Yeah, <laughs> yes, because I didn't understand nothing he just said. No, yeah, of course. He speaks horribly. <laughs> <laughs> so, the question here is, uh, in which ways do you think that techno music has influenced modern music? And uh, which kind of limits you think that it has breached? Well, first of all, techno, <coughs> the word techno is short for technology, and uh, the way technology has influenced modern music uh, is it advanced, I mean, just, it, just as it's advanced, everything in our society has changed the way of life for, for everything, and um, it just, it's just so happening that I make music, so it's changed life for me, and anybody else that makes music and that loves music, 
uh, it's, it's definitely uh, changed, uh, it's progressed, basically, uh, the advancement of, of music as a whole. So, eh, Juan dice que eh, básicamente con la tecnología eh, ha, ha ido avanzando con el conjunto con la, con la música y él ha, ha ido junto con eso y, y hoy en día todo, todo el avance que, que él vivió con la tecnología se traduce en eso, en la música techno del día de hoy y que va a seguir avanzando. So it's going to keep moving on techno music. Yes. So, um, let's move further. And, um, so, here the guys, we all believe, uh, many of us believe that you were one of the guys who invented the future, okay? <laughs> What do you think in terms of music and in terms of the, of the industry that's gonna be now? ¿Qué piensa él que viene ahora? What do you think that's the future for music after everything that has happened Uh, until today, and, and with your experience, like how do you see the industry today and for the future? Um, well, um, with with the ad, with the progress of, of uh, the technological revolution, uh, it, it it made a lot of things that we weren't able to do maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago now doable. And I think that uh, that kind of opened up a lot of doors for, for creativity, uh, for advancement. And, uh, and I think uh, basically the, uh, the possibilities are limitless. And that being said, uh, I don't know if there's any uh, uh, target or anything that you can say it's definitely going to be this way 10 years from now or, or 20 years from now. I mean, Information is moving faster than it's ever had in history. Uh, technology is, is, is advancing ever, you know, before, faster than ever before. And, and um, it's hard to say exactly uh, where it's going to be. Basically, uh, where it's going is up to you, it's up to us. And, and, uh, and who knows exactly where that's going to be. I mean, no <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. you know, the person with the best ideas will win, basically. Así, él dice que, bueno, básicamente es difícil saber qué viene. Hoy en día las posibilidades son ilimitadas y nadie tiene la bola de cristal para saber lo que vendrá. Yo le voy a hacer otra pregunta. Um, I'm going to make another question re like related to this. Um, so, we had a stage in the music industry, in the techno music industry, en la etapa de la música techno, when we were releasing vinyls, when we were releasing CDs, then Beatport came, then now it's full of new Beatport labels, ahora está lleno de labels de Beatport. So it seems that the over-information has taken a little toll on us. Yeah. La sobre-información nos ha saturado un poco. What do you think is like maybe one of the ways? Uh, some guys are going back to the uh, analog movement, some guys are going on the net labels, algunos vuelven a las tornas, otros están en los net labels. What do you think? Well, I mean, definitely I think all of, all of uh, Like I say it again, technology has, has made a lot more things possible. It's, it's made more music uh, be able to be produced and available. Uh, the, the, the negative, the downside of that is that people that shouldn't be releasing music or making music are able to make music now. Uh, the upside is uh, a lot of new, more better ideas are coming forth, and uh, I would, I would. I wouldn't want to get rid of that aspect uh, because of a few bad records or a few bad ideas. <laughs> so it's like a bit, bitter sweet kind of thing. You got to kind of take the bitter with the, the sweet. But I think uh, what we get on the sweet end far outweighs the negative, negative part. Bueno, Juan dice que um, con esta sobre información que hay hoy en día, hay mucha gente que lanza música así como así, digamos un poco a la rápida. Pero ese es solo el un pequeño punto negativo eh, dentro de un gran punto positivo que es básicamente la cantidad de buena música que también sale y de harta gente que está haciendo cosas buenas. Let's move to the next question then. So, um, 
Okay, so I mean, I want to, I want to, I want to elaborate a little bit more yeah, on that because sure. you said something about people going back to analog, yeah. and I guess you know, I, I guess you talk about these turntables in front of me here, and, yeah. um, and things. I mean, it's like it's like certain things, certain advancements. I mean, it's kind of hard to get, you know, you kind of stick with it uh, because you know um, it's just you know when it's when it's it's not broke, don't oh, fix yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, nobody's going to figure out a, another way to eat with a spoon and a fork. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can use chopsticks and you can use, but, you know, I mean, it's going to kind of, that's going to kind of stay the same, you know, Let me tell you probably you forever. <laughs> Dijo algo muy entretenido que eh, la gente que hoy en día vuelve a lo análogo, a las tornamesas y todo, tiene que ver con, con una frase que tienen en Norteamérica que si no está roto, no lo arregles. Las tornamesas siempre han funcionado, por lo cual hay eh, mucha gente que siempre ha estado con las tornamesas. Uh, así que él sigue eh, y, y, y le gusta que la gente se mueva en esto. Está bien eso. So, um, well, here we have lots of turntable fans. I know some of these guys. So, I'm going to take my glasses off. So there you go. <laughs> so I can see in your eyes out there. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sure that this is this question was done by Andres somewhere. So you grew up listening to the radio, and the techno was uh, got popular with programs like Electrifying Mojo. And uh, does the radio has an important role for you today compared to Spotify or iTunes? Quickly, eh, pregunta cuál es el rol de la radio comparado con Spotify y iTunes. You said the radio compared to Spotify, so you you compare Spotify. Comparing, yeah, com comparing what what was before with so what now. we have today. Um, well, yeah, I think uh, I think uh, conventional terrestrial radio is sort of uh, like a museum. I mean, it, it's not gone, but <laughs> it's like in the museum. You know, it's it's kind of like you know, there's so many different options that you know. You know, you know, you know. I can remember uh, when I was uh, a little kid that you know the only music that you heard was on the radio. I mean, you know, with commercials and, uh, and everything. And, and in order to hear this music, you had to listen to like five minutes of commercials every hour. And you know, <laughs> but now you know you have all of these different uh, options and outlets, and, and I think that also brings forth. Uh, more music and, and, and different uh, alternatives, and, uh, which I think all in all is good. So, uh, you know, progress is good. I have a question for you after it, translating. Eh, bueno, dice que básicamente la radio es algo que ya está un poquito fuera, it's out of, está fuera de, del, del sistema, pero que todas estas nuevas plataformas han ayudado mucho a que eh, la, la música se difunda más y mejor que no hay comerciales ni nada. Yo le quiero preguntar acerca de Detroit. ¿Cuántos programas hay en Detroit? So, what, in Detroit, do you have right now or a while ago or back in the day any good programs like for techno music or house music or? Yeah, deepspaceradio.com. Ah, yeah. <laughs> It's on internet. Okay. on the FM radio? Do you have anything over there? FM radios? It's obsolete. It's gone. Okay, there you go. So, <laughs> le pregunté si había algo en FM eh, y no, está obsoleta. Así que <laughs> sigamos con la entrevista. Um, okay. So, the guys here ask you, like, every musician here uh, fights to create his own style, his own flavor, his own identity. How that was for you? Una ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo él in, inventó, creó su propio estilo? ¿Cómo él eh, llegó a tener su identidad como Juan Atkins? Um, no, to answer, yeah. Well, needless to say, I kind of started a long time ago. And I started at a time when, uh, before the DJ became popular, uh, my job was just to uh, keep the floor busy keep the pe keep the crowd moving. Uh, nobody cared about the DJ. Nobody paid attention to the DJ. The only time they paid attention to us is when the record skipped. 
or scratch. <laughs> and then they looked and said, what the hell is going on? <laughs> but now, so it, it wasn't, it was no identity for the DJ. It wasn't, you know, your main job was to keep the music flowing. Hopefully your records didn't pop or scratch. And, 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 and keep, the, keep the floor busy, you know, keep everything moving. Uh, there, you know, progress happened and DJ became more popular, so now you have people coming into the game now that are looking to forge their own identity because everybody's looking at the DJ now. Uh, something that I can't really so much relate to because I came from a time before that era. I think, I think the question was more related to what was on your mind by the time you generated your first productions. By the time? You, you made your first uh, composed Post you know, in terms of works, DJing? Yeah. No, when you uh, produced your first music, right? what was on your mind by the time that which, with which you produced your own identity? Which is, I think, what you're most uh, known for. You know? um, what was on my mind was just, was just, was doing what was influenced, what I was influenced by. What I felt was beautiful in life, I put it on record at that time. At that time. You know, uh, um, uh, it wasn't it wasn't a it wasn't a struggle to be famous or to be known. Um, uh, it was it was just uh, there were there were things that I heard as a kid growing up, and I I just put all of these subliminal thoughts together when I made my music and put it out there for people. Uh, you know to have something different than what was going on at the time. Felipe, un segundo para traducir lo que dijimos antes, que bueno, él respondió que él antes no eh, pensó mucho en lo que estaba haciendo, sino que él solamente era el DJ. Y el DJ lo que se encargaba era de poner música. Antes no existía la figura del DJ superestrella. Entonces no había ni el Instagram, no había las fotos. El DJ ponía música y el único momento que la gente se preocupaba del DJ era cuando el vinilo saltaba. Entonces ahí miraban a la gente, la, la gente miraba y, oh, el DJ, pon buena música. Y después, bueno, mi amigo aquí le pregunta un poco cuál era su identidad y el Juan responde un poco eso, que él hizo, trató de ser bien auténtico consigo mismo y hacer lo que le fluía en ese tiempo. According with, with that, like, um, Jeff Mills once said, I, I'm not like I know don't know like the specific words, but he said something like, um, we were, what we were doing was not like um, dance music. We were mu making music uh, with mach machines. Our focus was, wasn't dance music. Is, is that what you also fe felt? Well, Jeff really can't speak for everybody. <laughs> no, I, I know, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking like um, for that for time you. maybe. Speak for you. Um, For me, well, what, 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 what did you want to make? I think, I, think, I think what people are getting at, and I think what people really want to know is like, is like what is it that, that made me create this style of music? Yeah. Or what happened? Or what, mm -hmm. what, what, what was in my head, right? Exactly. That's what you want to know, yeah. right? What did you eat for breakfast that day? What's that? <laughs> On the day of. What did you eat for breakfast that day? Um, you know, uh, here's the thing. I, I, I love music from birth, and I, all kind of music. It just, you know, and I look at what was, uh, all we had was FM radio when I started. And uh, it was very boring. And, um, and it was controlled. I mean, you had no way of, you know, you can call in a request, but you know, nine times out of 10, you couldn't get through. And the other nine times out of 10, the DJ wasn't gonna play what you asked anyway. So, um, You know, you had I had I looked at the I looked at it and I said to myself, well, what's missing? And my job was to fill the void of what was missing, to keep keep music interesting and and, and fun. And, and well it, it, different people get bored real easy. So, you know, they're always looking for something fresh. Anytime it's something new or fresh, uh, it creates excitement. Uh, because people want fresh, people want new all the time, you know, and, and so uh, I looked at the state of the music then and I said, well, what can I do to create some excitement and, and to give the people something fresh and an alternative to the old, same old rat tat tat that was going on? And 
that's that was that was all out with that was it. It was no great plan or, or uh, mission or anything like that. It was just to provide an alternative and something new and fresh for uh, what was happening at that time. And the, the experiment happened to work out ten times better than I imagined. Inventó este estilo. Pero él, la verdad que no tenía nada muy claro, sino que estaba en un proceso de experimentación y lo que él quería hacer era eh, mostrar algo nuevo, algo diferente, algo que saliera de lo común. Y yo creo que eso es muy interesante de aplicar al día de hoy. I believe that that's very interesting that should be reapplied today, you know, because people, la gente tiende a quedarse en lo que ya conoce. People tend to stay on what they already know and like retry the, the proof formulas, right? Exactly. La gente trata de probar las fórmulas, sobre todo aquí a veces nos pasa eso. Entonces, eh, Juan, at that time, he invented and, and he dared to do something different and fresh. So, let's go and keep, keep, the, keep the loop on, okay? So, um, this is a good one, the guys did, did a good one here. So, Techno has some social and political, political roots, according to this. So, uh, do you feel that that route has changed over the generations that listen to this music? So, I'm going to tell you guys, so you can think in the meantime. Dice, la, la raíz del techno tiene algún elemento social eh, y político. ¿Cree, Juan, que eso ha ido cambiando? Do you think it has changed? Do you agree on that, that it has political and social roots? Um, I think, uh, um, so not so much political, um, you know, uh, the advancement of technology, I think this is, it, it, I, I'm, I'm representing the musical aspect of, of, of the advancement of technology, how it affects music, and how, you know, I applied that to this new idea uh, that, that I was creating, because, um, you know, that was, it kind of went hand in hand. It's like, oh, okay, you want to do something new? Well, why not you use new gear, new tools? to create something new. And, uh, it, you know, it, it, it would have been hard for me to, to do uh, this new genre of music called techno using a, a piano and a, yeah. a, a, a guitar, acoustic like guitar and <laughs> some horns, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, um, you know, so that, that was the whole idea. It was just, it wasn't just, just the idea, but it was also how the idea was implemented. So do you don't think that there's like an actual political and social side of it? I'm, I, I'm not sure about that personally, but so I'm, I'm asking. Well, I mean, the, the social, political, um, you know, uh, I, I, I would say, I mean, there's like in terms of uh, political, um, you know, it, it can apply the same way, you know, uh, uh, you know, the same ideas, you know, the same rules and, and the same people that, that are running things, that ran things yesterday probably don't have the vision to, to, to do the things that need to be done today, especially how technology has, uh, has uh, transformed society. You've got to have a new way of thinking, a new way of, of, uh, of, of playing by the rules, so to speak. You know? And the rules have changed <coughs> as well. So you've got to have people that can think and know uh, uh, about how, it, how to apply these different you know, the, uh, the act of, because you know, you got to have some law and order, and, and, and you know, so how do you apply the law and order to, uh, you know, uh, something that you, you know, we can do really video teleconferencing that you couldn't do amazing. 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So. I, I won't ask you another thing, but I'm going to translate this to the guys. Eh, dice que más que nada la, la revolución tiene que ver con el, con el área más sonora, más musical. Eh, y la tecnología es la que produjo el cambio, más allá de lo social y de lo político. Eh, yo quiero preguntarle con una comparación con el house versus el techno, que en algún momento el house también tuvo un elemento social. So I wanted to make you a little comparison, because in house music, like the guys in Chicago, uh, at that time they were also making a bit of, well, a bit earlier, uh, making uh, change as well, and they were like occupying spaces that were not available. So, which kind of difference do you see between that, like, like historically speaking, like, historically hablando como la comparación? Um, 
Well, you know, Chicago, we already always had a friendly rivalry kind of with Chicago. It's only a four hour drive up the road from Detroit. Uh, for the U.S., it's kind of, that's kind of close. Um, and um, and an a, a interesting story is that. You shared a lot Yeah. Uh, we, this is, this is a whole nother, nother story altogether, but. I'm going to touch on it somewhat a little bit. Uh, we were the, one of the things that happened to kind of kind of kickstart this whole Detroit techno movement is that we had we had found a way to get equipment. We had found a way to get TR 909s, TR 808s, basically almost for free. No, oh, not for free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. Okay. That'll come out in the film or something, but. <laughs> um, needless to say, we had these. We had a couple of 909s, and um, Derek uh, had to pay his rent, and he didn't have money to pay the rent. So we needed to sell this 909. Jeff Mills wanted to buy this 909. I said, "Don't sell it to Jeff because that's our crosstown competition." <laughs> You know, take it to Chicago and sell it. He took the 909 and sold it to Frankie Knowles. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good one, eh? And Frankie Knowles and Chip E made Like This, which was actually like one of the first house records. And they kind of, and they called it a house record because you could only hear it in, your, in their own house. <laughs> So that's why it was called House. That's been that, that whole term came. came Fantastic. That's a new one. That's a very really good one. So, eh, me cuenta una historia bien entretenida que eh, eh, Detroit y Chicago son ciudades en Norteamérica que están muy cerca, están como cuatro horas de distancia. Y era una, eh, una rivalidad amigable, o sea, eran como rivales, pero igual amigos, porque eran todos músicos en, en ese tiempo. Y eh, resulta que ellos tenían un, un equipo, los TR-909 y la Roland y uno que era de Derek, eh, Derek May, y la tenía que vender entonces dijeron no, no se la vendas a nadie aquí en Detroit véndesela a alguien en Chicago y se la vendió a Frankie Knuckles que es súper famoso y que empezó a hacer house music y house se llamaba porque solo lo podía tocar en su casa house <laughs> muy buena muy good so, um... so Detroit started house music <laughs> <laughs> so that's a really good one now because we're going to talk about hardware and, equip and equipment. So the guys here wants, want to know if um, you started with which kind of hardware, equip equipment, you know, which drum machines, uh, and uh, what's your actual favorite setup? The one before and the one today. My favorite setup is whatever setup is in front of me at that moment. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, the thing about me making music is, and, and I, I, this is advice that I would give to most people, is um, don't get, you know, uh, what inspired me is every time I got a piece of new gear, it, 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 it brought out creativity because it's something about learning that equipment brings out creativity. So I always try to, if I'm getting ready to go into a new project, to use new stuff. And, and I don't like to stay in one place. You know, I like to go all over the world in different studios and make music. So, um, so there is no per perfect, uh, there is no uh, main setup or whatever. I mean, um, I mean, I have, I have certain, uh, I mean, I started out using a, a, a Sequential Circus Pro 1 and, a, and a, what we actually bought probably the first 808 that was ever came off the, off the assembly line. Uh, uh, wow. Before that was a DR55 Roland, it was a little machine that had these preset beats and all that. It used white noise for the sounds, for the hi-hat, for the snares, all white noise. Just yeah. gated and filtered in a way. Uh, and that was like, the, the, it was Roland. It was called the Boss DR55. Um, uh, other than that, I mean, it, it was just, I, you know, I had fun learning uh, new gear as it as it came along. I, I, I couldn't go back through uh, which ones that I kind of gravitated to more 
Uh, I just, and you know, I love the thrill of learning new gear. Eh, básicamente, eh, respecto a los equipos que él usaba antes y los que usa hoy, eh, Juan dice que eh, todos los equipos son buenos básicamente, que a él le gusta explorar, eh, no tiene ningún favorito y le gusta ir de, de estudio en estudio probando y que si puede mencionar alguno está el, el Roland TV808, TR808, el típico del drum machine que a todos les gusta oír de nuevo, y la Boss DR, Boss DR. Yeah, DR55. I want to ask you something now. Um, have you tried any of the new stuff that's been coming out? Some there's some really cool stuff now. Le digo que hay muchas cosas bacanas hoy en día. Like the you know have you seen the old pocket operators or the electrons? Those are crazy, man. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I've been I've been looking at uh, a lot of that, a lot of stuff. You know, like I said, I, you know, learning new stuff is, is yeah. really spurs my creativity. So uh, there's some there's some things that I've been looking at. I mean, you know, I, you know, I mean, I think it's a beauty to, you know, I mean, I, I can't give you the exact formula, if, if it's even a formula, but, um, you know, but just needless to say that, you know, uh, I'm, 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 I'm on top of most new developments. That, that's my creativity. That spurs my creativity. That's perfect. There's also some really good software as well, mm -hmm. like Reactor, Native Instrument Reactor. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole, the whole too. Cool. Amazing. Yeah. So, um, can I ask something? Oh, sure. Okay. Can you share with us something maybe the edge, out of the agenda? Maybe something really funny that happened with, with Derek or some of, of, of your past there in, in, in Detroit that you can maybe share with us? Like a secret history that nobody really knows and that maybe someday we will see in a in a special movie or Well I just gave you one. I just gave okay. you one. Okay. <laughs> no, that was really one. That was really good. How's yeah, that? and I know I'm gonna get some flat from Jeffy, Jesse Saunders and uh, for that. But uh, you know uh, you yeah, have a lot of stories. You story. have a lot of stories. True story man. I know. Okay, let's keep going then. Um, I'm going to ask you about the city of Detroit that um, uh, the city of Detroit gave you honors about, you know, the contribution like of techno for all the guys and everything. So the guys wants to know that um, has been here like a change of the whole vision regarding how the mainstream media sees the techno music? Give me one second. Le pregunté... ¿Cómo, eh, bueno, porque la ciudad de Detroit les ha, ha rendido homenaje a toda la gente que está hecho, ha hecho techno Entonces le pregunté si es que él considera que hay un cambio en la visión de, 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 de los medios masivos. ¿Cómo ven a esta música? So. Um, yeah, uh, I think, um, I think uh, the good thing about, I mean, there's a lot of, You know, and I've made a, 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 some gripes about uh, the cheesy top top 10 DJ, world's top 10 DJs. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of a, it's sour, it's kind of sour that they have to be so cheesy. But on the other hand, uh, I have to take my hat because they are, they have brought electronic music to the forefront. And, um, and, um, and, and that, you know, I have to commend them for that. I'm not going to mention any names, but, you know, Um, uh, because of the fact that they're doing electronic music, I have to I have to give them their their props for that, and uh, it, it kind of opens the doors for us uh, that are doing more pure, real electronic music. Uh, at the same token, so I think it's, it's overall it's a good thing. Dice que en general es bueno que haya. Um ese reconocimiento de los medios masivos, incluso con los DJs y superestrellas que salen hoy en día, que a veces el aporte no es tanto, no obstante, esa gente ha logrado a dar más eh, tribuna a la música techno, a la underground también, y a la gente que está haciendo música desde el alma, la, música, la gente que quiere hacer música por amor a la música. So, um, let's keep moving on and... Uh, Oh well, this is a bit of the the same. Do you? It's it's kind of a today's uh, thing question about the techno music and all the hype that's 
uh, around techno music. How do you see this? It's a bit related to the same. So, le pregunto que, ¿cómo ve él toda esta, toda esta moda, entre comillas, de lo que es el techno hoy en día, que todo es techno, que, que eh, se, se volvió un poco taquilla? Eh, ¿qué es lo que, ¿Cuál es su visión al respecto? So, what's your vision about that? Um, you know, I think it's I think it's almost the same question yeah. as the previous. Um, you know, uh, it's it's a lot of hype. I mean, you know, uh, you know, I you know, I don't I don't advise people to kind of get caught up in the hype, but at the same token, it's bringing more attention to what we call techno music, electronic music. I just hope that people don't stop with the introduction. Yeah. You know, yeah. dig deeper in in, in in it. I mean, if you if you love music. And, then you know, take the time to, to, to see what it's all about and where it came from and where it's going. So, él dice que, bueno, básicamente la, la pregunta iba más o menos parecida a la anterior, que de toda la gente que viene en la moda del techno hay muchos de esos que van más allá y él recomienda que vayamos más allá, que, que sigamos profundizando en el estudio de la música, que, que, que vayamos más allá y no nos quedemos con solo... La, la, la superficie. Yo le quiero hacer una pregunta respecto a música también. ¿Qué otros estilos le gustan? So, I want to make a personal question as well regarding like music. Which other styles of music do you like as well? Like, do you like whatever, like salsa? Do you like metal? Do you like, you know, any kind of other music as well? You know, you're a musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love all music. I love. I'm a music lover first. And 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 that was a, a one of the things that that inspired me to to make music anyway was just music. So there's there's no uh, style that you know I'm not open to. You know I mean classical, country and western. I love it all. What about jazz, for example? Jazz, oh okay, that I grew up with jazz. Famous. I grew up on jazz, and I can play some jazz that blow your mind. Yeah. <laughs> But um, yes, I, I love all kind of and good music. A good track is a good track. Good song is a good song, and and you know I I wouldn't be true to myself or to the world if if I discriminated against uh, any style of music. You know, I mean, I just happen to be uh, you know uh, prolific at a certain area, but you know, at the end of the day, I love I, I love it all. Can you name uh, like three bands that you used to listen before getting like into the DJing stuff? Well, the j in jazz, I listened to a lot of Her uh, Herbie Hancock, uh, uh, Billy Cobham, uh, Weather Report. I mean, I can go on forever. <laughs> um, um, uh, uh, I actually used to listen to Kiss. I don't know how, wow, how many people know who Kiss. Remember yeah. Kiss with the painted faces and Ace yeah. with the long tongue? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was. I bought a couple. I bought Kiss Alive album when I was in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, some classical. I can't name some classical people right off the bat, but um, I, you know, so I, I, I can go across the spectrum. I, I, you know, I have a good uh, playlist of everything. Yeah. <laughs> bueno, ahí nombró hartas bandas y proyectos de jazz sobre todo que a él le gustan porque Detroit es una ciudad que es muy famosa por su jazz y por su rock además de la electrónica um, Ok, so, uh, last question from the guys So, do you think, you already answered a little bit of this Do you think that today is an exciting time for music and why, what's, what's the most exciting thing about today's scene, about today's industry, the technology, the mass media, the videos, the SoundCloud, everything that we have available, what would you, a couple of things would, that you would pick? Right now, I think it's probably the best time to uh, be living uh, in terms of uh, the possibilities, limited possi uh, limitless possibilities of uh, uh, electronic and te technological advances. Um, When I first started, um, you couldn't. I mean, our, our synthesizer, my synthesizer, you couldn't. wasn't even able to memorize the patch. <coughs> and so when you turned it off, you turned it back on. It was a whole different patch, you know. And and I mean that simple thing now um, allows you to move a little bit quicker. 
uh, allows you to bring back, to capture ideas that you may have had and that, you know, have to go to the bathroom and come back, you forgot, <laughs> you know. Um, um, and, and so, uh, I mean, basically to say that, you know, the possibilities are limitless. And I think that in itself uh, is, is very exciting. I mean, I was very limited by, by uh, the, the equipment that I had available at the time, um, you know, and now uh, it's, it's like it's a world of, of, of different, yeah, possibilities and sounds. And, and, and basically you can take it wherever you want to, want to go and with not, without limitations. And I think that's the beauty right now that didn't exist not too long ago. Bueno, él dice una, eh, antes los sintetizadores, todo lo que uno tenía en el estudio, eh, no era posible guardar, que hoy en día tú pones safe, pones guardar, en, ya, listo, te puedes ir al baño, volver y ya, está ahí. Antes no se podía hacer eso, tenías que dejar todo listo, no había ni siquiera para sacar fotos, que nosotros lo hacemos hoy en el cinte que está arriba, de verdad sacamos fotos y se, ah, no había nada de eso y ahora hay tantas cosas para poder crear y además que es por todo portátil también entonces eso es una gran ventaja you know I give you an example like when I my first demo when I was in high school there was the drum machine the drum machines didn't even exist I had to use a record with drum track rhythm tracks on it as my oh. as my rhythm section for my demo pre-recorded drum uh, solos and stuff on, uh, called drum drops and, <laughs> and uh, you know so that's the difference and now you got like drum with so many drum programs you can't even count them uh, you don't even know about them. so it's uh, definitely better now él cuenta una historia bien entretenida también que antes y todavía se encuentran por ahí los vinilos traían las secuencias de de, de, de percusiones entonces ellos ponían a, a correr el vinilo y sabía la secuencia de percusiones y ahí entre una y otra hacían las canciones no había ni siquiera máquina entonces era más difícil Give me one bit that guy over there. amigo, cuéntame porque ¿por Alemania fue la cuña la cuña de la música en Cuba de eh, él dice ¿por qué? Why Germany is the Birthplace of techno. Yeah. Do you, yeah. he, ah, okay. So, so he asked, why do you think that Germany was the birthplace of techno? Like, why that place? Why Germany was like in Europe? In Europe, like the place, like according to him, like. Was the, like, the birthplace of techno? In, what, in Europe. But in Europe. No, not in, not in, not in the world. Not in the world. Not in the Europe. Why, why is Berlin? Like, it's from Berlin. Yeah, yeah. Like you see, like, it means like, more housing and, you know, friends. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me sum it up like this. I, I think, uh, I think Europe, unfortunately for America, Europe uh, is a little bit more um, progressive and open-minded towards new things and that's why our music went to Europe and became popular before it came back here and uh, I, you know I you know I mean I'm from I'm from US I was born and raised in the US and I love home there's no place like home but you know there's a bitter side to it as well and and unfortunately that's one of the things in, in terms of uh, uh, although I'm from America America just didn't get it uh, at the time, and I, I, I don't know what it is that creates that strange uh, anomaly of us being from America, but America not embracing what we're doing. Yeah, you know, and you know, I, I, maybe some racial flat factors play the play the role. Uh, you know, I you know I'm, I, I don't know, but you know, all I know is that you know the music kind of took off in Europe first, and I think that just it just every time I've been. From the first time, I noticed the attitudes towards new things are a little bit more acceptable because uh, it's not, it's, you know, I, the U.S. Is, is the capital capitalism center yeah. of the world, you know, so it's all about making money. And if it's not, it's usually new ideas and things that are, aren't proven, it's not about making money, you know. So 
the, the powers that be tend to not want to pay attention. Whereas to me in Europe, it's not really so much emphasized on making money. Él dice algo muy interesante respecto a la comparación entre Norteamérica y Europa, eh, que él considera, y muchos otros artistas de la época también dicen que en Europa eh, el recibimiento al techno y al house fue mucho más abierto, muy, hubo mucho más boom de lo que hubo en, en el mismo Norteamérica, porque, por muchos factores, porque en Norteamérica, eh, un poco lo que pasa acá también, que todo lo que no genera dinero inmediatamente no... no no, no lo pescan de inmediato eh, también Juan dice que puede que haya habido un factor racial eh, de que por qué no pescaron tanto el tecno en su momento y cree que claro que todavía se vive un poco eso en Norteamérica y no solo él cree eso muchos otros artistas de Norteamérica yo viví en Norteamérica también opino lo mismo y claro Europa ha abierto muchas puertas that's really interesting so Um, what do you think about the electronic movement here in Chile? Or about the ¿Qué opina de la música electrónica en Chile? I love Chile. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about our DJs, the electronic movement? Oh, I mean, you got, you know, uh, I was just, I, I was just with Luciano the other day. Uh, I think he's from here, right? You got, you got Ricardo from here. I mean, this is a lot of hot guys from here, man. It must be something in the water down here. Man. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is good. <laughs> yeah, floor. Yeah, floor. Yeah, floor. Okay. Floor right. <laughs> that works. <laughs> it, it works. Yeah. Alguien más? Keeping up, but uh, me and me, Derek, and Kevin are about to do a tour uh, called TB3, which means the Belleville 3. But that, that doesn't necessarily mean well, that you keep talking all the time, you know? Well, I don't know <laughs> why we, we, I don't know if we can do that if we don't talk to each other. Um, so, that, that said, we do keep in contact on, on, a, on a, when, when, we can, when we can catch up with each other, put it that way. Uh, I want to say daily, but sometimes one of us, like now, um, I can't be on the phone talking to them right now. So, um, uh, but we do, we do keep talking somewhat on a daily basis. And we just played together um, at uh, Fabric in Spain, uh, and in Madrid. Feel, what do you feel that, uh, say, Derek doesn't, hasn't produced music in a very long time, and Kevin, and change sound very much. Um, you know, I can't, I can't, I, I can't answer that question uh, <laughs> for them. Um, maybe they'll see this and, and maybe, maybe they'll come back with an answer. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> bueno, eh, básicamente respondió que sí, que son, son amigos que se conversan de repente y todo, y que van a hacer una gira ahora los tres, eh, Kevin. Eh, eh, de Ricky y Juan, eh, se va, llama la gira, es called TV3. TV3. Así que van a ir todos de tour. Y no, bueno, no. Eh, respecto a la pregunta que, que hicieron, eh, de qué opinaba él de, de que ellos hagan otra música ahora, 
eh, cada uno hace la música que quiere y eh, ellos tienen que ellos tienen que responder eso al final cada uno tiene su propio camino everyone has his own way basically right so any other question otra pregunta question um, you talk about uh, Ellie, uh, because you you have a, a roots like in music and you talk about you listen to uh, kiss and uh, jazz but um, nowadays uh, everyone with, with the media uh, have uh, access to a lot of uh, different uh, artists DJs and producers uh, and uh, they're like very underground music uh, that everyone uh, has like a little uh, a little jewel uh, and maybe uh, you have a, a someone that you can maybe recommend uh, to to listen because it's uh, uh, someone that it's very underrated I'm going to translate this. Okay. Él le pregunta básicamente si es que con toda la gente que hay haciendo música, si es que Juan conoce a alguno medio underground, no tan conocido, que él pueda recomendar o que le guste. Um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> so he said that there's lots of people making music, a lot of, you know, a lot of information. Do you know some guys that are not really known that you could recommend us and that give us some nice... Uh, music for us that comes to mind right now? Um, you know, uh, that's funny because now there's so much music coming, you know, the emphasis is not so much on, on a particular artist now. Um, so, and then, you know, if, if, you know, I got so much stuff that I love right now. And if I name one person, then somebody's going to get mad at me yeah, that I didn't name. name. So I'm not going to name anybody. Okay. But uh, my daughter is coming up, and she's uh, <laughs> she's doing quite well with, with some new ideas and new sounds, basically. Okay, bueno, dijo que no iba a nombrar a nadie para no para que nadie se enojara. This is a little water for you, the Chilean water make, makes good techno. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> No, no, no va a nombrar a nadie, pero su hija está haciendo música bacana, así que pónganle ojo. The name of your daughter, like the DJ, then. For me, for me, you said that she's coming up and she's gonna make. Well, 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 well the TP3 is me, Derek, and Kevin. There you go. But of course, you know, I also get booked on my own too as one act. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> so, any other question? Más preguntas? Si quieren las pueden hacer en español, en inglés. ¿Qué le parece el DJ? O sea, ¿qué opina Juan Ángel sobre el DJ de Green Velvet? Green Velvet. Green Velvet. So, what do you think about the Green Velvet DJ? What do I think about Green Velvet? Yeah. Uh, he's uh, he, he's from Chicago, right? <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, he's meant to do a remix on No UFOs. I'm still waiting on it. <laughs> Luciano just did finish one. The guy from Chile. So that's you know, hey, we got Chile, we got Chile in the mix. <laughs> Dice que está esperando todavía un remix de ese compadre, pero no ha llegado. Y que sí llegó el de Luciano de Chile, así so que... So, hopefully Green will see this and, and hurry up and get the remix done. So, cause, because Luciano is on my head about getting it out. Yeah, así que dice que ojalá que ya se pongan las pilas porque Luciano ya, ya se las puso, así que bien. Señores, señoritas, ¿alguien quiere hacer una pregunta? DJ Wask. ¿Alguien? 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 Playing with symphony orchestra. Uh, uh, very, 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 uh, very. <laughs> I don't have no word for it. Actually, it was a very great experience. Um, uh, we, we're looking. Uh, we're actually talking about doing more, more shows. I think it turned out. Uh, you know, we kind of. It was kind of a, a, a show that came together sort of at the last minute. Uh, And, uh, but it turned out a lot better than we all thought. And um, uh, we're working on uh, some, some more shows. And, uh, but, but the experience was, was, uh, was, was definitely um, uh, exhilarating for me. And uh, because, you know, I actually, uh, when I was in high school, I took uh, music theory. And I had to, you know, learn how to write music for orchestra. And, and now I had, The opportunity to actually kind of live that experience, and it was great. 
It's great. <laughs> what was the, 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 the biggest um, problem playing with, <clears throat> with the orchestra? The biggest challenge. <laughs> the, the, um, actually, there was no, everything uh, went actually smoother than I thought it was going to be. I mean, if, if anything, I created more problems than anything else. <laughs> Uh, because I just, you know, I, it was something new, and to be quite honest, I was kind of scared. But, um, uh, but uh, you know, the the the, the, the conductor, um, uh, Tijan Tijan, uh, was was very great in, in in bringing me along, and you know, rubbing my shoulders when it was time, and. Um, and uh, it was uh, it was it was a great experience. Uh, I think the, the biggest technical issue was um, um, I was playing. I actually played a, a Ableton push uh, with it to put effects and stuff over the you know over the sound. Uh, it, that was my role with most of it, uh, other than composing the songs. But um, and uh, I think we couldn't get the. Uh, the sound card to work or something before it took us about an hour to get this machine to into worked into the system. And other than that, everything was cool. So, él le dice que le preguntaron que cuál cómo fue su experiencia eh, tocando con la orquesta sinfónica. Él dice que fue bacán, que estuvo muy bueno y que que fue un desafío muy interesante. Tocó con el Ableton Push. Tuvo algunos problemas igual con ese, pero well, fue una buena experiencia. Yo te quiero, I'm going to make you a little question regarding that, like regarding the like music tuition. Um, quiero hacer una pregunta respecto a las academias, la música, cómo uno aprende. Eh, ¿qué, qué, ¿Qué opina de lo respecto? So what do you think about like the music schools? There's a new like a tendency of like going to the school to be a DJ, going to the, to the academy to learn to produce. Uh, some people like say that it's not good, like they are like into the old way of learning it by yourself. Some other believe that it's really good to have like an established method and everything. What is your vision about it? Um, well, I put it to you like this. I think, uh, as, as a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought that up because we're starting a, a hey, DJ school. Actually, in conjunction with DJ school, we partnership uh, uh, in Detroit. Uh, uh, my school is called Spin Inc., and we're we're uh, doing this with uh, with uh, with DJ School in Wasco here, um, and uh, he's been in Detroit and helped us set up. And uh, so I think uh, I wish I had I, I wish I had a school like this when I was starting. Um, you know, I, it probably it, you know I, it, it probably things we probably be having this conference 15 years earlier than now had had this been around when I was starting. So um, I think it's, it's definitely uh, something that's that's great for uh, the community, especially for uh, urban communities in America, uh, you know, be, you know, because that's a, a one of the problems that I had uh, when I started out was that we never had a place to practice. Uh, we didn't have access to gear. We had to settle for, for subpar gear. And I and I think that that hampered the development of, uh, a great great deal. And uh, if we had a place to go and a place to pick up ideas from other people doing the same thing and exchange ideas, uh, would have definitely been a great help. And I, and I think it's a, a development now that this technology and stuff is here that is uh, uh, definitely needed and, and appreciated. Yo le pregunté qué opinaba él de, de las academias de DJ, de, la, de los lugares donde se enseña la música electrónica, porque antes había un paradigma respecto a las personas que decían que no, que esto tú tienes que aprenderlo solo. Pero él, Juan dice que es bueno, que ojalá él hubiese tenido algún lugar donde practicar, donde tener equipos de buena calidad, porque él cuando empezó tenía equipos subpar, o sea, menos buenos del, del, del estándar, o sea, como muchos acá también, que nos pasó lo mismo. Y claro, opina que es una excelente eh, iniciativa, una buena idea. Y él mismo va a empezar su propia academia con la ayuda de DJ School Santiago y en alianza con Detroit. En, y el nombre de la academia, the name of the academy of... Uh, Spin Inc. Spin Inc. Así que... Like spin, like spin. Like spin. Like spin. Like spin. Like spin. Yeah. Spin. But yeah, man, I mean, it was like, it was like when, I, when me and Derek started, man, we was always trying to find... Like, 
we had to find a friend's basement to rehearse in when their parents weren't at home. And, you know, because the music, you know, you know, older people, they didn't, they, they didn't, they couldn't take the music and the neighbors complaining. So, you know, it was, I mean, it took almost a day just to find somewhere to go make a mixtape, you know, and, and, and now, you know, you have places like this that, you know, that you can go and practice, you know, it's, 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 it's indispensable. Cuando Derek decía que tenían que ir al subterráneo de su mamá, cuando ella no estaba para ir a, a tratar de grabar un set un, un día entero para grabar un set de una hora. Así que es excelente poder tener estos espacios de estudio y de práctica eh, con equipos de buena calidad. Eh, no sé si Was quiere hacer una pregunta al respecto. Solo que... Bueno, que parte de lo que le hemos explicado, como le había dicho al principio, que sea básicamente lo que llegamos a, a conocer fueron todos esos tips, ¿cierto? De cosas que yo creo que nadie sabía lo de la, de la historia de cómo se crea el house. Y, y es de las cosas que nosotros hacemos. La verdad es que partimos como escuela hace 18 años, y hace ya un año que estamos con Juan haciendo esto de spinning. Por eso me han visto tantas fotos en Detroit. Eh, parte de eso veo a muchos que son DJs y que son productores and so if you want to get a tip for the new producers you know and the new DJs but more than producers so if you can talk uh, to them about new, one tip the best tip for you to them uh, the best tip I think for any new DJ for the producers and producers yeah or, or both, or both. <laughs> don't don't be afraid to take chances. Um, Like I was saying earlier, I mean, you know, one of the one of the things that that helped us along, that helped me when me and Derek started, and, and you know, that brought us to the forefront, was that we weren't scared to do things that the other DJs weren't doing. We weren't scared to play music that the other DJs weren't playing. We weren't scared to to play new music, to make new music, and just do things differently, you know. Um, and, and just don't be scared to take chances. That's all. Just, just believe in your heart, believe what you feel, and go for it. And don't be scared. Él recomienda a todos que dice algo muy lindo y muy cierto para nosotros en nuestra escena santiaguina chilena hoy en día, de que no tengan miedo de eh, probar cosas nuevas, de atreverse a hacer cosas nuevas, de probar nuevos sonidos, de hacer lo que nunca nadie antes ha hecho. No esperen la validación del medio ni de los otros DJs, sino que Jueguensela con, con lo que ustedes creen que es bueno. Eso. Bueno, un aplauso para Juan.